coast between Jacksonville Beach and St. Augustine is a rolling panorama of white sand dunes bordered by a waterfront road called the Buccaneer Trail. For generations, Jacksonville residents have been building cottages and homes among the dunes, particularly practically to the water's edge. Dora's massive breakers undid what nature took a hundred years to construct and which the Army Corps of Engineers has been fighting to preserve for 20 years. Vast areas of beach were eroded, tumbling many homes into the sea. Fortunately, the residents had evacuated before dawn. Downtown of a sprawling storm. Five rockets were dismantled from their launch pad. Dora moved inland, cutting straight across the flat pine woodlands of the Florida Panhandle. She did not get far, however, before her winds faded. By the time Dora reached Apalachee Bay, about 30 miles southeast of Tallahassee, she was a dying storm spilling torrents of rainwater that flooded the pulp forests and washed out New Hamilton. It's difficult to assess the true damage caused by Hurricane Dora in terms of dollars and cents, and this is where the controversy begins. Horseback estimates by various public and private agencies immediately after the storm passes are questionable at best. Among the agencies involved in counting up Dora's alleged $100 million price tag was the American Red Cross. Ray Strub, president of the Miami chapter, tells how they arrive at these estimates. Use two means of estimating. First, an aerial survey to get an overall picture of total damage, and then a more detailed ground survey. We also have nurses checking local hospitals for disaster calls, uh, illnesses, or injuries with which the people may need financial assistance. We check any special local features of self-employment, such as fishing, with fishermen owning their own equipment and boats. Also, in our pre-disaster planning and action, we do surveys of metropolitan areas particularly, as well as other more populous areas, of the degree of insurance coverage, the percentage of insurance coverage. We have a pre-disaster general knowledge of the average cost of dwelling replacement. As the disaster relief progresses, we keep close check of the number of people applying, the types of needs, and the cost levels of meeting the types of needs, so that uh, the cost estimating is not done on a haphazard basis, but is done on observation, uh, known facts, and close scrutiny of the disaster relief program as it progresses. We'll return to September Storm after this message. Estimates of damage caused by Hurricane Dora vary. Florida Civil Defense Director H.W. Tarkington was probably as close as anybody when he pegged losses at $200 million. St. Augustine, which took a direct hit from the fat, wet storm, was a montage of rubble the day after Dora passed. Along the beaches in particular, wind and water left vivid scars. Beach and bayfront homes and businesses were badly waterlogged, with many windows and even some walls knocked in. The municipal pier was gone, so was much of the beach, the city's water system was damaged, most of the power was out, so were telephone communications. Dora is ranked by the Weather Bureau as a normal hurricane. She claimed no lives, as did Cleo when she raked the Caribbean. Her most intense winds, clocked at 135 miles an hour, were spent harmlessly at sea. Dora's 115 mile an hour blows at landfall were feeble compared with the 140 mile an hour sustained winds and 200 mile per hour gusts inflicted upon the Keys by Hurricane Donna four years ago. Hurricane Cleo is said to have caused $215 million damage in South Florida. If Dora's bill is higher, 
and it appears that it most likely will be, it's because building codes in North Florida are less rigid. Duval County's losses are expected to reach $100 million. The day after Hurricane Dora passed, President Lyndon Johnson declared much of northeastern Florida a major disaster area, then flew to Jacksonville to view the damage personally. The chief executive with Governor Ferris Bryant and Democratic gubernatorial nominee Hayden Burns in tow was not hesitant about getting his shoes muddy. The destruction I have seen is serious and assured property owners and businessmen that the government will give every assistance in the work of rehabilitation. The Army Corps of Engineers was immediately assigned the task of rebuilding the lost public beaches. The Small Business Administration set about taking applications for low interest loans. Statistically, the Florida coast north of Cape Kennedy attracts the fewest hurricanes of any area between Brownsville, Texas and Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. But this is little consolation when a storm such as Dora finally comes ashore. It's been suggested that the state enact a building code of its own, setting minimum standards for hurricane protection throughout Florida. Governor Ferris Bryant is one of those who disagrees. thing that these two hurricanes teaches us is that we have made tremendous strides 